Anna, thank you for giving us a very drunk show that I haven't done a real like barn burning drinking show in a while. Oh yeah, and we are doing it right now. Thank you. What the fuck's going on, guys? Wow. That was a, such an abrupt beginning. That was very... That was <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even I don't have headphones on. Or, you know, headphones, but sounded loud. Peter, give me your headphones. No, so, no. He can... He, no, he barely he can, <laughs> no, I don't. No, no, no. I think my hair looks better without them, so we'll just keep them off. I don't think she wants to hear herself. I don't, actually. You're right. So no, she doesn't. I she, don't, so we're just going to leave it like this. <laughs> The problem with the current upgrade—it's like this is all set up for two people these days, and it's like. But, but how is that an upgrade? Better cameras and. Does that mean if it's I must look worse on a better camera? No. I'm gonna start with a very vain question because Peter made me very insecure <laughs> before we came here. I was getting ready and I did my makeup and I went out to where he was sitting on the chair and there was a light hanging over and I went, I put my face in the light and I was like, Peter, how does it look? And he went, oh, he was like, oh, and I was like, that's not the reaction. No, she, that she's leaving us a part, a important part of the story, okay. out, which is that first I saw what she looked like, and it was very muted. She hadn't put on all these colors and stuff. No, I had to put on all the color. The only thing that I put on was the lipstick. Well, I, I, maybe it was just the lipstick that really popped or something. And I think I wasn't more muted. Like, I wasn't directly under the light, but now we're directly un, like, under light. So I think that well, now I'm insecure. Prob probably that. And and sh uh, she was like, do I look fine? I said, yeah, you look fine. No, he went, and, and, no, no, no. This the is the, the first time you asked me. Yes. And then, then you went into the bathroom for like two seconds and you came back out and you looked like this. And I was like, whoa. I did it. I only did my, I only did my lipstick. It was like it was like a dramatic change from what I had just seen I, like 30 seconds ago. I only did my lipstick. That's the only thing that I changed between those like two times that one time. And like I said, just like that reaction is not what I'm going for. So I think you look amazing. Okay, thank you. Just, you got to remember, Peter's been doing, staring at nothing but genitals. He can't identify human faces anymore. That's right. He's just been staring at genitals for the last month and you're a half. Okay, so you're- A defense. month and a half. I wish it just a month and a half. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, he's just, he's like, oh, that's a human face. He, yeah. You look great. I don't know how to relate to faces. He's like- <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that's a bit odd. I mean, Peter's in an odd job. That's right. Aren't we all? <laughs> fair. Fair. But you and I don't have to watch mountains of porn every year. That's true. Right. Does it still come in giant boxes of DVDs like it used to? Sometimes, yeah. That's cool. I'm glad that we still have that. No, I think so. Well, I, I'm cool. Shake your head. Uh, I'm cool. I mean, it's cool that shit is released on DVD. It's not cool when you're voting on the awards and you have a literal fucking porn box fortress. Uh, yeah, it's it's nothing I, it's nothing like it used to be, but but a fortress is cool regardless of what it's built out of. You know, it's like you're building it out of like your furniture, like your couch, like cushions and stuff. It's fun. You can put a blanket over it. We got into fortresses somehow. But till <laughs> he said, for, he said, he said, oh, fortress. literally, literally, when Steve lived here. That back corner yeah. was all just porn DVD boxes, and we didn't know what to do with them. Yeah, you never made a fortress. How it used to be, not so much anymore. But there, there are still DVDs that are sent out to the voters. But it's not like not like it once was. Yeah. <laughs> every, every year, it was just like, okay, well, cool. Half the apartment is going to be occupied by porn DVDs now. Yeah. Yeah. It was a. Well, half his apartment is occupied by, like, DVDs anyways. Well, yeah, I'm okay with that. Not just porn, but just, like, he has a lot of DVDs. I, 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 I actually have an entire porn shed <laughs> full of porn DVDs on my property. Oh, really? Yes. I haven't seen it. <laughs> yes, you have. You just Oh, have I, for, I forgot. Are you just not showing Anna your favorites? That must be it. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just a... a 
very large shed full of porn. <laughs> yeah, but like when you bring someone over, you you have to show them your library, right? Yeah, well, I don't even want I don't even want to go in there myself, much less bring her in there. Why is it like haunted? Yes, it could be. For all I know, we could have like a séance in there and see like how many yeah. people have like left the industry. If they have anything to say, a lot. Ninety percent of them or so. I'm sure they have a lot to say. <laughs> I mean, for fuck's sake, in your time in, how many people of your contemporaries when you started are still here? Me? Yeah, you. Oh, I, okay. Um, I know I, how many people were gone from me and oh the God. other old man. That's so honestly, I'm like I, I'm so out of touch with people that started with me. It's like I don't think many of them, at least like the names that I remember from when I lived here. But it's just like I'm so out of touch with everyone now. I have a few friends still that I like talk to, but I don't know like who is still here from like almost nine years ago. A lot of people are gone. Yeah. That's the nature of the business. But there's a, there's two different classes. There's the ones, you know, who are c- kind of here for a couple of years and then they float. And then there's the lifers. Am I a lifer yet? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, you're, you're getting there for sure. <laughs> Peter Rossi once said to me, like, once you're in 10 years, you get a gold watch. <laughs> okay, so I got almost like a year, a little bit more than a year. <laughs> I mean, at the point then where- I get a gold watch. That would be, that would be cool. I'll let Federosi know to put I like the order a, in. I would like the Cartier watch. Like, um, I forget what is the tank watch, like this one, but Cartier. That would be cool. I'll accept that on my ten year anniversary. Avian, do that for her. Oh sure, yeah. Thanks. Get right on it. <laughs> well, you got a, like about a year now to save up and honor me. So <laughs> right. honor her, Peter. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I kept telling him, I was like, I have the world re- like record for DAP scenes and like TAP scenes. I should get some kind of recognition for that, I think. That's a lifetime achievement. And I've had that record for like a few years now. And I continue, I will improve on it and add to it. I'm going to leave it to somebody else to start the, uh, the porno book of world records. The porno, the porno leaderboards. Yeah. There should, there should be something like that. I mean, there should be, I'm just saying, I'm not going to do it. (laughs) But you're a living historian, Peter. (laughs) (laughs) Who else would be better to do it? Um, I don't know. Who has consumed more porn than you at this point? Very few people. Right. But he avoids my work anyways, so. That's not true. I don't avoid your work. <laughs> it's just not your thing. <laughs> it's just not my thing. No. He's just not sexually aroused by your work. A lot of people aren't, I understand. But there are those few that are loyal, so I appreciate them. <laughs> oh, they're not only loyal. They're fanatical. <laughs> yeah. Like, I get people throughout the year being like, so when's Anna coming back on again? Like, dude, she doesn't live in the States. Well, I can't just be like summon her from fucking Prague. People just honestly don't understand locations at all. People ask, it's like, are you here or are you here? And it's like, no. Like, I don't have plans to go here. I don't live there. Like, why do you think I'm going to show up in this random area? Americans don't understand geography. It's kind of, that's true. Well, I think it has to do with, like, you know, like, the conventions and expos, too, because a lot of, like, girls do show up to those or do, like, their feature dancing or whatever, and I don't do any of those things. So I understand why someone might ask if I'm going to be here at this time, but... Yeah, but you're a European... Most of the time, I'm not. (laughs) You're a European performer at this point, like... But even so, like, Venus and, like, you know, stuff like that or, like, Aerofest, it's, like... I'll go to like Czech Aerofest in Prague, but I don't go to like any other conventions besides that. And then uh, some, I've been to Exvis Europa uh, like a couple times. And then AVN, I make it here or to Vegas every year. Peter's already checking his watch. He's counting the minutes of AVN. He's just like, oh, it, it starts <laughs> in a matter of there. days. <laughs> This is the first, I think this is the first year we're doing this pre-AVN. Yo, it is. You usually catch me on like the very last leg of my trip, like I, you know, I, post-AVN. I, I don't even remember. I have no rec- recollection. <laughs> this this whole time of year is just a big blur to me. Same. It is. Well, I'm glad we captured it every year. So yeah. people, you can look back and be like, okay, that's where I was in January. 
2019 and 2020. Oh, yeah. We do this every time. January is just one year. <laughs> it feels that way sometimes. It definitely feels that way. I'm unfortunately ditching AVN this year, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Why? No offense to the convention. I just get shit content there. Like, mm. I can't sit down with people for any length of time. Right. So it's just so like. You don't want to go just for fun? Uh? They don't let me in for fun. <laughs> I complete. I don't go for fun either, honestly. I haven't been signing at like any booths. I, last year, um, Cinematica got me a like expo ticket to sign at their booth. And I was there for maybe like. A couple hours, and I feel really bad that I wasn't there longer, but I usually use that time to, like, work. So this year, like, I have, I think, two scenes in Vegas, and then I'm ditching the white party before the awards. I'm going to see a Styx concert or seeing Styx for the fifth time. That is definitely the right move. Yeah, I think so. I'd rather go to that the night before the awards than... Like, no offense to the white party, but... From what I've been hearing, it's like, there are more and more fans there. So it's like, mm. Really? There are? Yeah. I'm glad I've ditched. I'm gl- ditching it. I normally don't stay for long or go anyways, but. I've never gone. I don't have the wardrobe for it. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Understand. I'm not going to go buy a white outfit just to go to the I, fucking white party. I clearly, I understand. It's not ideal. <laughs> Can we just have a black party instead? I think that would be a lot better for a lot of the performers. I mean, I don't see why not. What? Do you, who is it in charge of the white party? Can't we just like change the not name? Me. Well, traditionally, it's the agencies were in charge of the white party. Yeah. And now? I think that's still the case. I don't well, know. they should take a vote. Yeah, because years and years ago, LA Direct was the ones putting on the white party, and then it became like the conglomerate of the agents. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know at this point. I don't know either. That was always an excuse to be like, I'm going to be at a bar. Yeah. Well, I guess I can think about that next year. You know, on when I weigh, like what I want to do, there's the white party, there's sticks, sticks, <laughs> or there's staying at my hotel room, white party, or reading a book, and then sticks. So. All better choices, in my opinion. Exactly. You no. Know, you're a well-established performer. You don't have to like go network and hobnob for your own to get your name out. I feel like I still have to because since I live like in Europe now, a lot of people don't know that I'm still performing here in like the States. I still get messages from someone normally towards like the end of my trip and they're like, oh, you're here. And I'm like, yo, I've been here every January for the last like six years since I moved away. Yeah. You advertise it very well. Yeah. Like I try to make it very clear to everyone, and it's been the same for, like, six years now, but (laughs) people still think that I'm just, like, gone. (laughs) Do you really want to shoot for people who think you're gone? (laughs) Well, no, it's not just, like, shooting for people. It's, like, I don't know, old acquaintances, people like, talents or stuff that I used to be closer to or that I enjoyed working with. They just don't realize that I'm still here. I still come. Yeah. That was uh, an insinuation. It works. (laughs) Double entendre. Yeah. 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 I I got it. I was just not going to be crude. Just. (laughs) Why not? I don't know. You should go for it. Okay. Anna, please have as many screaming orgasms as you can while you're in Vegas. Please. I will. Okay. Good. <laughs> Settled. It's on camera. We have it on the record. <laughs> we have it on the record. Anna is going to get it in. What the fuck have you been doing with yourself the last year? Okay. So, again, kind of like Peter, the last year has been like a blur. I do remember. So, like, I was here. Last January, and then, uh, you know, I go home for a little bit in Oregon for, like, a week or two. I came, I went back to Prague, and so I was working for, like, March, like, through February and March. And then it was my birthday in April, and it's been a while, actually, since I went to Isla to my birthday. I went there for my 21st birthday, and... uh, 
I then COVID happened and everything and I hadn't gone back since. But so this year I flew to Paris at the beginning of April and I stayed in Paris for like one week. And then from Paris, I rented a car and I drove up to like Calais and got on like the freight train and took it to, um, what is it, Folkestone or something and drove up to London and I stayed in London for one week. And one of my best friends lives there, uh, Barbie Sins. So I hung out with her a lot. And then from London, I drove up to, I stopped in like Manchester. And then um, I went to Edinburgh. And then from Edinburgh to like Kennecraig, Albert. And I got on the ferry to Isla. And then I stayed in Isla for about one week. And it was extremely like... And I took my jo- my dog, of course, this entire way there. So it was just so perfect. I stayed in this like little like cottage and it was like overlooking Port Ellen and like on top of a hill by the radio mast. And, you know, I would go to do like some distillery tours and then I would come back to like the little cottage and I would drink my whiskey and reading with my dog with like a full panoramic view of like the bay and the heather and like animals coming up like the rams and chickens and stuff it was just like peaceful and a perfect birthday and then after that I had to drive you know all the way back to Paris drop off the car and then fly back to Prague so that took up like the entire month of April and then May I just worked through summer I guess that's like summer is all of like a blur. And then uh, like during, you know, the fall is when like I'm fall to winter. I'm the most busy because I'm about to leave to go to the States. And so like the company starts mostly legal porno and perverse family. They try to squeeze in as many scenes because I'm about to leave for two months. And that's like pretty much how my year has been. I hate to break it to you. It's only going to speed up more as you get older. Yeah. I am aware. Yeah, I'm aware. No, I don't think you really understand. <laughs> oh, I think I, uh, I think I do, especially if you move away. Like you're in your own little bubble right now, but when you start like moving away on your like completely on your own, then I do. I think I understand. I was in my 20s once. <laughs> <laughs> and did you make it as far as I did traveling? No. But I'm saying the the acceleration of time is real. Oh, yeah. I understand. The fact I only lived in L.A. I always remind Peter this. I've lived in I lived in L.A. for two years and I've been living in Prague for six years now. That just seems impossible. Exactly. Doesn't it? I can't believe it. (laughs) And no plans to ever come back for good, huh? No. Can't say I blame you. I was just, I posted on my Twitter earlier when we were driving down here that like on the right here and it's like, I checked my weather app. It's supposedly like a clear night, but there are like the sky is empty. All of the light pollution and like the smog, it's like you can see a couple stars and it's just like, it must be so sad to live here. I'm so glad that I moved away. See, I don't think it's sad. It reminds me that I'm not an insignificant speck of dust floating through the cosmos. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. I don't have stars to remind me that I don't matter. (laughs) I think we can all interpret it differently. But it's just, to me, it's like it's a very barren landscape outside. In some way, it makes you feel like you're more alone. Like you're just this like little planet with nothing beyond you. And it's like, why would you want to live in like an environment or situation like that? And to me, I think it seems more lonely. LA being lonely? No, no, never, (laughs) never. No one's ever lonely in LA. (laughs) It's crazy talk. (laughs) Crazy talk. Community here? No. A good song. Nobody's ever lonely in LA. (laughs) (laughs) And that song must be sarcastic. Very. (laughs) Yeah. Very. Very. Peter, besides looking at a lot of buttholes, what have you been up to? (laughs) Uh, I wish I could say there was something else that I've been up to. (laughs) Have you at least been looking at some buttholes in person? No. I have a question. Can you pick my butthole out of a lineup? 
My butthole yeah, or I my think, gape? I, I think absolutely. Well, the gape, yeah. the, the gape's not fair. Why? It's a very distinct gape. Yeah. Good. So you can pick me out of a lineup. Right. Like, <laughs> you know, puckered. Puckered might be a bit of a challenge. Like, it was tight. Oh, yo, that is, I've been on, like, sets before where I was supposed to be, like, it's my first time doing, first doing anal, and they've told me to, like, squeeze. They're like, you shouldn't gape. You should be, like, squeeze it so it doesn't show that you, I don't know. Are a professional but, at this? But I've gaped anyways before, even before I started doing a lot of hardcore anal. It's just, like, my body naturally does it, so. It just opens up. <laughs> Like some, Blessed. <laughs> someone says the magic words. And it's like the cave of wonders opens. <laughs> the cave of hearts opens. <laughs> well, I'm saying you have a wonderful butthole. Sorry. No, I, I said heart. I still have like the heart shaped gape. That's <laughs> the a cave heart. of heart opens. I will start calling my ass that. Okay. <laughs> my cave of hearts. Sorry, I interrupted you besides buttholes. I, I, I've been in a haze for like. <laughs> I don't know. Months now. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on. It's just like, you know, uh, Halloween came and went, just blew right past Thanksgiving, oh Christmas, New Year's, just like all just like fucking blew right past me. All I've been doing is working the entire time. Non-stop. Okay, well. I was also working, and I distinctly remember this. In October, I missed Friday the 13th. I was working, and then also, I didn't think about it. I was working on the 31st of October, too. Or October 31st, sorry. (laughs) And uh, so I missed Friday the 13th and Halloween. I don't celebrate Thanksgiving anyways because I'm a vegetarian and... Pilgrims and stuff. It was always, it's just a fake holiday and the food I don't like. So, <laughs> aren't all holidays technically fake? Yeah, pretty much. You know, I mean, if Jesus was even real, he definitely wasn't the, born on Christmas. Those, those two holidays, like out of the entire year. And then, of course, Christmas, like a New Year's with my family. But those two, I would have liked to done some, like do something, but I was working. It was still like fun. I would have just liked to, you know, get scared the shit out of me on either of those days. <laughs> would have been nice. Go to a haunted house. Yeah. That's one thing that I miss living in Europe is that there aren't like Halloween, at least in Czech, it's not really celebrated. You know, they don't do like pumpkins. They don't do like you can't go to a patch and take a hayride or go through like a haunted corn maze. You should introduce it to them. Right? I wanted to do that this year. Like, I wanted, there's, like, kids, like, teenagers in the building. And, like, I'm re- obviously, I'm really good friends with my neighbors. It's, like, kind of a small community. But then I ended up working. Like, I just said yes to the, like, date. And I didn't think ahead. And then I was like, fuck. <laughs> it's okay. Peter and I weren't scared either. We were just at a Halloween party. <laughs> well, you've never done a haunted corn maze before. No. No, I have not. We have that in uh, Savi's Island in Oregon. It's like a haunted house, but it's a corn maze that you can go through with people jumping out at you and like the mist and everything. It's really fun. I've done the haunted hayride a couple of times. Haunted corn maze. I understand. Try to run through it. <laughs> so you just reenact a horror movie through a corn maze? You just <clears throat> run for your life? It's got, I mean, if you get scared. And also, you know, we have the home like... Locally brewed, like, cider, beer, and, and, like, wine. So, you know, you can get a little bit drunk and then go through the corn maze, and it's like it's way better than a haunted house. I haven't done it in years. That just sounds like a way that, like, some poor actor gets hit. <laughs> you know, I do remember a friend, like, years ago was, like, running through it, and to be honest, I, he was on some psychedelics, but oh, no. he ripped out his septum. Oh, my God. During the, like, haunted corn maze. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> How's that even happen? If they have like scarecrows, you know, like they'll jump out at you from between like the corn and there's like, it's just, it's way better than a haunted house. <laughs> I will take your word for it. I, w- I don't think I'm going to ever make it to Oregon to do that. I don't, don't That's, foresee it. Sadly. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I haven't been to Oregon in Jesus, like a fucking decade. 
Yeah, fuck. Yeah, it's why you should go back. We have such like Oregon is such a good state. I mean, honestly, right now it's like in a bit of turmoil because of like, you know, government and stuff, but it's still like an amazing place to go. Oh, I'm not knocking. I had a lot of fun in Portland, but not just Portland, but Oregon in general. I've never made it out of Portland. Well, <laughs> okay, well, that is also very unfortunate. I take that back. I definitely drove the gorge to like Eastern Washington, but I don't think that really counts and stop. No. It's like, oh, okay, I'm going to just drive the fucking gorge. I still just went through the valley. <laughs> yeah. At this point, when I have free time, the idea of domestic travel is low on the priority. It's just like, oh, I got time. I want to leave the fucking states. I understand that for when, like, I've been driving from, like, Prague to Paris or, like, Paris to, like, up to Scotland or something. And, like, I'll look at an exit, you know, like, from, like, was it from Prague to Paris, there's Luxembourg. And I always see the exit. And, you know, it's, like, maybe a 40-minute, like, detour around, like, towards Paris. And I always see it every time I drive that way, but I've never actually stopped there because when I start driving, I just want to like finish to my destination. Why aren't you taking advantage of all the trains? Because I have my dog. They don't allow dogs on trains? They do, but it's like, you know, I would rather like stop and let him go outside to like piss and do whatever he needs to do. Like I can stop like along the way. And for trains, you know, it's like... It would be good if I didn't have my dog, but I might have like a 30, 40 minute transfer and I don't have time to go all the way past like the station and then come back in. And I can always stop to smoke or. I mean, you're an American. Just let the dog pee wherever. No, I'm not. (laughs) The world stage doesn't think much of us. No, I don't. No, I'm not going to do that. And like I said, I like to have like my own decision when I want to stop. No, I, I totally get it. But and I like driving. I love driving. So. <laughs> I don't know this as an ignorant American. What side of the road are like the, I know what side like the UK is on, but. In the UK, they drive on the left side and the rest of Europe, they drive on the right, like in America. Fucking Brits. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't got into any wrecks. I've actually driven pretty well in the UK. I would hope so. I haven't had. <laughs> please, please don't die in the UK getting scotch. Like, please don't. I will not. Okay. Well, please don't die in the UK. And please don't die in the UK while getting scotch. Like, both. Anyway, I will not do anything that would make my dog die. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> so if you're in the car by yourself, okay, all bets are off? Probably. But <laughs> he's always there. Always. So this may be an unsafe car ride back to your place, Peter. Well, he's driving. You're still in the car. Yeah. It is. Then it is unsafe. (laughs) But my parents know where I am. They can always pick up Jamie. (laughs) The priority is like, I don't care what happens to me. As long as Jamie's okay. Yeah. It is. That is my main priority in anything. And I think he knows that very well. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, th- I mean, this is the annual takeover of Jamie taking over your apartment, so. <laughs> yeah, it's correct. It's fine. Take it along. Yeah. yeah. Jamie's cool. Thank you. He is. I just remember in previous years, Peter telling stories like, Jamie you know, gets anxiety if you're not around for a while. That's true. He doesn't get anxiety. He just oh, doesn't. Oh, yes, he does. He <laughs> <laughs> no, he just gets depressed. He doesn't do anything. Well, yeah. That's. He doesn't like, you know, run around or like destroy anything. He just gets depressed and like won't move. <laughs> we all get that. We all get that when you're not around for a while and we all just get <laughs> depressed. And like, like, that's why we can't recall our year. It's like you've been gone this whole time. Exactly. Oh, that's so sweet. Is it? <laughs> I think so. Did I misinterpret that? No, no, I'm just being an ass. Don't mind me. I would love it if one of these times, maybe I thought about it today. Like if I want like to take Jamie here and have him on the show. The audience generally doesn't appreciate dog noises, unfortunately. He's very quiet. He is very quiet. I'll say that. It's true. It's mm-hmm. very true. I mean, he's been on lots of porn sets. He's even like I think I've mentioned it before. He's been he was in one of Rocco's movies. I don't know if we should admit that. It sounds <laughs> no, like a it crime. Wasn't anything. No, it was just like in the Time Witches movie. Um, Time Witches, I remember that one. 
It's kind of like sucks to say. It was Gabriel was directing it. And I like went into the house and he saw Jamie. And he was like, we have to put Jamie into the movie somehow. So instead of Rocco turning into like a werewolf, he turned into Jamie. <laughs> and like the only thing was like to uh, they put him in the woods and he was there like, go hunt the witches. And I called him over to me. And, the, you know, he went out like chasing the witches. And that was like the only part that he was in. <laughs> That is utterly ridiculous because I'm pretty sure Rocco's penis is bigger than Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. And I asked them, I was like, did you keep this scene in the movie? And they were like, yes. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. He turns it. <laughs> that is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Jamie's a movie star. He is. Where's Jamie's AVN? There's a, a pet's. Oh, God, I can't even say that. There's no pet save We can't talk about that. Never yeah, mind. I, I don't think that would go over too well. <laughs> okay. Let's, we should change, let's change the subject now. Let's change the subject. It's <laughs> They're just animal breeding documentaries. Mm. Okay, well, not even that. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> Though we should have a fan award for, you know, cutest pets. That would be a good one. That would be a good one. Or most spoiled. I think that like... No, no, because that, that brings money into it. And there are some people who can just outspend other people. Right. Oh, I spoil my dog so much. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't feel like you're in the tax bracket to outspend some people on their on their animals if they... Will. Oh, my God. I think girls are like catty about the regular awards. Imagine if they're... Pets were. Oh, oh my god! That would, <laughs> I that live for this it. chaos. I live for it. That would be so chaotic and so personal. I live for this chaos. I live for it. That would Next actually year, Peter. Next year. That would actually be hilarious. That would be so chaotic and, like I said, personal. Oh my god! <laughs> Come on, Peter. Come on. Come on. Ay, ay, ay. I know you will have to endure a lot of hate tweets over that one. <laughs> <but>. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the awards. Yes. I'm going to put this out there because I, I tweeted about this when x did their announcements for their awards this year. And I'm very thankful that AVN is still like the only people that are doing, well, I guess Urban X did it, but best adult podcast. Oh, yes, he mentioned that. You're nominated. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I knew I was going to be nominated. I knew. <laughs> I knew. Thank you. It's an honor. Even though that's not actually officially announced yet? No. <laughs> We're just going to pretend <laughs> like. Well, uh, to be fair, on an episode that's out this week, I said I was going to be nominated. Oh, okay. I already just said, like, all right, all right. and someone's like, my guest is like, oh, manifest. I'm like, no, nah, 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 it's happening. <laughs> I also threatened to, you know, chain you to my balcony until it was official, but. Right. That would be cool. I would watch that on video. Well, I guess I know what bonus content we're happening tonight. I guess I'll drive myself home after this. Awesome. <laughs> so we know where he's staying. <laughs> you don't know how to drive a stick. I, well, yes, I. Oh, wow. Yes, I do. I, I believe there's a lot of footage of her driving a stick. I'm just. Really? Yes. I'm, All right. Well, then. I'm I had some trouble stick. driving a stick with like a shitty fucking car in London that was on the opposite side. All right. But yes, I know how to Fair drive enough. a stick. Well, that's good. I, I, was just done it. A, I was just making a double entendre, but. <laughs> no, my experience from driving a stick is like when, uh, when I got drunk and I lived with my parents. I'm not insinuating anything, but I asked my dad to pick me up because I was like too hungover to take the bus home. And he would pick me up and he made me use like the shift. And he said that if I couldn't like get myself home, then he would kick me out and make me take the bus. And oh, like, man, it's on the bus. That's how you teach love. someone to. So that's to how I learned drive to drive a, stick. a stick shift. And. Uh, the only thing was, you know, getting like the pedals in like the middle because I didn't do that part. But yes, fuck you. I know how to drive. So a she shift. burned out his clutch. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> so if I need my stick shift driven, I know who to call. Right. Well, also, <laughs> also, almost all the cars you rent in Europe are manual. Like, it's, are they really? Yeah, it's really actually hard to get an automatic in Europe. It actually, you know, it's way cheaper to get a manual. Well, like when we were renting cars in Spain, literally they had no automatics to rent. See, it was just fucked up. Like, the first time I did, like, because that was when I was, like, a teenager. 
And then years later, when I did it, like in London, again, it was like on the opposite side and like the gears were different. And that was very difficult. And they had me start on a hill with like, it was really fucked up what (laughs) they did. So that is not like a very good example of my driving, but. (laughs) Don't worry. We'll make you comfortable on the balcony, Peter, by the way. Yo, I'd love to see that. Just wants to see you tied up to my balcony. Hey, hey, hey. That's not much to ask for. She is my guest. I I have to accommodate her. <laughs> and he's my plus one. It's like at a wedding. So the plus one has to do oh, good. abide by what the guest says. Wow, after all these years, she's still referring to as her plus one. <laughs> is he not? Well, I No, I get <laughs> Well. Okay, at this, well, at this point, yes, too. It's both. This is the annual Anna and Peter show. It is. Not that I wouldn't have you without Peter, but it is the annual Anna and Peter show. Oh, yes, no, I don't mean that it wouldn't happen without, like, without him. I don't think maybe I wouldn't even do it if he didn't come because wow. that's a tradition. Wow. Well, I mean, she did greet me with "Hey, asshole!" when she walked in the door. I've got so. that well, going that's your for fucking, me. Like Matt, that's as like the front door. So. <laughs> It does say. What else am I supposed to say? (laughs) Hi, Matt. Good to see you. (laughs) No, it's like, what's up, asshole? That's the greeting that I got, so that's the greeting that you get. (laughs) It says assholes live forever. It didn't say hi, asshole. That's true. Well, if you are, like, residing in this building and it says assholes live forever, then I assume that you are an asshole. That's just. Oh, no, I'm going to die young. Well, I can't die young anymore, but I'm going to die soon. Uh, Okay. Live fast, leave a pretty corpse. I'm way past that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> way past that. Yeah. yeah. I haven't been able to be a pretty corpse since like the early 2000s. I think you look fine. You'll still be pretty. Aw. Aw. Both of you. Aww. As soon as I kill you. Whoa. <laughs> so sadistic. This is why she wants me to tie you to the fucking balcony. So you're easier to murder. You know, this whole entire time when you've been saying this, I've been thinking of scaphism. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. It's a type of uh, execution. It's very rarely like, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? Like recorded in history, but it's where they will tie you to like a tree or like a boat and they will force feed you like honey and drinks and they tie you down and you vomit on yourself and they leave you tied up so that, you know, it attracts like insects that start to infest you and you die from like, you know, the environment's. Uh, that just sounds like my day to day. Lovely, like that. That's you know, just my life. I mean, you know, dehydration, everything uh, being you know slowly like infested by. Yep, my day to day. That's just <laughs> that's just life. Mm. Cool. I'm happy. I'm living your fantasy, living it out for you, gorging myself on alcohol and honey. But you don't want to see it physically. Oh no, it's happening to me. <laughs> well, it's happening, but I'm just not know, tied that's down. In, that's right. internal. You don't want to see it externally. Oh, like to view uh, it. You're like that's. I mean, it, it's happening under my pants right now. Like, <laughs> I just covered up. No, through. like that would be you know like voyeur like voyeurism. Just watching it happen. You want to watch Peter or I die? No. I'm not sure I believe her. <laughs> you didn't say that. I just mentioned like what. How specifically you would want to watch Peter die while he's tied to my balcony. It was just the thought that came to my mind that it reminded me of when you get tied and you die from like exposure. That's just <laughs> the thought that it's just the it's just the way it goes. Peter, has she had you update your will? Are you leaving your place to her? <laughs> no, no. He should because I've helped I, organize it. Yeah. Maybe. The Who's last it? apartment, yes. The last apartment, yeah, kind of. Who's your place go to when you go, Peter? I, I don't know. I think uh, <laughs> I think my nephew would be the next logical person to give my. <laughs> Anna looks so hurt. <laughs> so hurt by that. <laughs> wow. Way to derail the whole fucking podcast, Peter. <clears throat> I mean, I love you, but you're not my nephew. <laughs> and how often do you see your nephew? 
not as often as I see you. How, okay. how much time has your nephew spent in that apartment? Actually, maybe more. No, oh, none. Zero. None. Yeah. Right. So by de facto, Anna should have it. By time spent. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Maybe. You might make a point. It's <laughs> just like, this is a weird conversation. Okay, <laughs> yeah. we can pass on to a different subject. Oh, Let's uh, go to sticks. And, uh, we don't want to talk about Peter's living will anymore? Aw. I don't have one. It's okay. Really? Yeah. I have a will. I should make one, probably. What do I get? You get nothing. Aha! Uh, see? Fuck? I see you for like one to two hours every year. And those... Those one to two hours aren't magical? Like, they what don't do you leave want an impression? Okay, what do you want me to leave you? You can tell me right now. Everything. <laughs> I can leave you, like, my shoes or my panties. You can sell them. They're not my size. You. Oh, they're not your size. I said sell, but if you want to wear them. I can't. I will not fit in them. Well, then sell them. Pretty good. Because I'm too lazy to. You can make some good, good cash. You, you know there's companies that will do it for you, right? I'm aware, but I'm too lazy to contact them. I will put you in contact with one of them. Like They would have to physically come to me and take the stuff. Maybe they'll send I you would money. normally I normally just like donate to either like some companies that take old stuff or I'll leave it at like, you know, a secondhand shop. I don't have like the patience to do that. <laughs> Well, at least I'm getting something. I, I, have, I have a nest egg now. Okay. There you go. Exactly. Okay. I mean, there's zero chance that I'm going to outlive Anna, but zero chance. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be so sure about that. I would be. I would be. <laughs> oh, so you guys trust in me. That means. Yeah. No, no, no. We just trust in my poor health. And not mine, considering how much alcohol I drink. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's and right. how much I've smoked. Uh-huh. Yeah, because I'm... The paragon of virtue. When it comes to that shit. <laughs> paragon. <laughs> Alcohol will never pass through these lips. <laughs> Not ever. Cheers to that. I need a pour more. You know, I, didn't just, what I, mean. I didn't just have a cigar before you guys got here. No. I knew you still smoked cigars. Of course. Why would I stop? <laughs> I made him stop on the way here. I was out of Dejarum, so. But they only had, like, the ruby ones, which are, like, I think they're cherry-flavored or something. I just like the original. Wait a minute. Are those even legal in California? I thought we couldn't have anything flavored anymore. They are, but it's not a cigarette. It's a cigar. By all, they changed it slightly. So it's actually, they made it worse for you as opposed to a cigarette. It's now a cigar, so they just, like, made the standards of a cigar. So it's actually, like, you're still inhaling something that's, like, way worse for you. And that's the great America. Because <laughs> we live in a nanny state, so. Like, oh, hey, adults can't make their own choices on what they want to imbibe or put in their bodies. I remember when I was living here, and, like, I moved here when I was just, like, I was 18, almost 19. And, you know, I bought, like, my, like, cloves, like, from this same, like, uh, gas station every day. And then one day I went to buy them and they asked for, like, my ID. And they're like, you're not 21. It was when they changed the state law and I've been smoking these fucking cloves again. Okay, since I was a teenager. And to, like, go there, and they're like, no, we can't give it to you anymore. I was like, what the fuck? Are you serious? Yet another reason I'm thankful I'm an old. Never had to deal with that. I only had to deal with it. I mean, after that, anyways, like, six months, like, later, I moved to Prague. But still, it was just, like, it was like a fucking slap in the face that I couldn't buy tobacco anymore when I'd been smoking it for so long and from the same fucking shop. That's fucking miserable. On the plus side, thankfully, you're not old enough to have been drinking at 18 and then have them change the legal drinking age because that happened in some people's lifetime. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. Here? Well, Louisiana changed in like the 90s. To 21. Yeah. So there are definitely people that like of our age group that went from. But how many states was that? A handful. Like, uh, I'd have to Google on. When all of them changed, it did not all from like Indiana because the federal government was like, 
we're not giving you funding unless you change your legal drinking age. Okay, yo, you can go to war and you can get married, but you can't smoke a fucking cigarette or drink. Yeah, it's That's dumb. That's cool. It's like, you got to do all that shit sober? Who wants to get married sober? Who wants to, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no one. Right? The one time I almost got married, I was pretty fucked up. Almost is the key word, and that's why you're mature enough to do it. No, we sobered up. Exactly. You didn't do it. It was almost, so that well, means that. It was also because the Kiss Chapel wasn't readily available. Well, within that time frame, whatever. Mm, AVN 14. <laughs> <laughs> Ditch the award. Oh, that was the year before. No. Yo, that was the year before I got into the industry. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, the year where I, d- well, one of the many years I ditched the award show and then like. Yeah, ended up very drunk, hooking up with someone. And during the hookup, she's just like, this is my first trip to Vegas. I should have a quickie wedding. I'm like, fuck it. I'm in. We got the wedding license and everything. Like, we went to Clark County and got the wedding license. But and it wasn't consummated because you were Oh, no, I mean, drunk. it was consummated, but it was. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> okay. I vaguely remember, but yes. Okay, vaguely. Well, she bitched about <laughs> Okay, so I don't think that this well, is a clear consummation. Oh, no, no. The consummation she bitched about like that, I was kind of lazy in the sack. You I'm know, not- this gets into like, you know, specifics. <laughs> oh, I don't care. I've told this story on air. It. Oh, no, I'm not concerned about like your like <laughs> well, file. And- it's just that it might not, considering, I don't know, old standards, probably didn't suffice. <laughs> Oh, I was definitely lazy in the sack because I was drunk as shit. And because that, that whole day was a shit show and she was the second person I banged that day. So, But it was like, was it more than a tampon up you or no? Uh, yes, I'm hung better than a tampon. <laughs> sure. Yes, I see my penis ver- very often. <laughs> but you were drunk. You don't remember. Oh, no, I, I remember. Th- I, I, I do remember the sex. I, I do. Because you can break your virginity with a tampon, so. Good to know. <laughs> just saying. No, no, it was. <laughs> I'm just saying how you might have not. Oh, no, I, I definitely I definitely did. I was just lazy. Okay, well, proud of, not proud of. No, don't, I, <laughs> not my proudest moment, but it was. And, like, my drunk ass is just like, I wanted to keep going, but you were, you know, being. Why kind is, of- like, Peter on his phone and not. Because I have, like, important shit that's going on, but continue. I wasn't okay, going to well, call him out on it. I will. I could keep reading the book that I'm on, and you guys could talk. That's horrible podcasting. Yeah. I could read it out loud if you want an audio book. I don't. I want a podcast. <laughs> okay, well, then he's... A bunch of small women are going to murder him if he doesn't get these awards out soon, so... Mm. I'm sure that's what he's probably responding to. Mm. <laughs> Just so we know, I'm not one of them. Yeah, I know. He trusts me. Well, and you're up for non-fan voting awards, I'm assuming. I don't think so, because like I said, most... Yeah, you are. (laughs) (laughs) I am? Of course you are. I thought people still didn't know I existed. (laughs) The man helps decide the awards. He definitely knows you exist. Well, of course, because I'm staying with him. But I, I'm pretty sure, do, like, he, he it has, has nothing to do with him. It has to do with fans. No, no, I'm, but and I'm pretty sure he has object permanence. He remembers you exist when you're not in his apartment. Yes, that's true. That's very sweet, because most people don't. <laughs> I remember you exist. Thank you. You're also still like on my cover art on my website. So, oh, you're pouring a bottle down my throat in a bathtub. So, yes. <laughs> The website's getting redesigned. That that art may end up going way of the dodo, unfortunately. What was that? It may be, it may be being retired. Be, well, retired? Mm-hmm. Why? Because the site's getting redesigned. Oh, so how should we do this, like, replicate it again so that it works? <laughs> Did you just want to force feed me alcohol on a tub again? That and piss. I have never drank your urine. That was off camera. <laughs> I definitely didn't drink it off camera either. I definitely did not. I have definitely. Not. No, I. Mm-hmm. No, I'm like. Did I? No, no, I have not. 
I'm certain I have not. Are you sure there wasn't the tub? Yes, I'm certain. Peter was there. Peter, did I drink her urine? No. No. Wishful thinking. I did, though, I think. Oh, no. Um, we definitely talked about you making cocktails out of your own urine. Yo, and I, I did it off to the side. And I think I might have given it to you a little bit. I mean, if you had... I think I, you would have tasted the difference anyways at that point. If you had, I'd happily talk about it. I'm not ashamed of it. I just don't think it happened. Well, then we can always do that tonight. Oh, my God. All right. Well, I need to drink a lot more. <laughs> this is what I did when COVID started and I was like doing, what is it? Some like video of like live stream with Rocco. And I think it's like the Anna DeVille drink is like scotch with some piss. It is. We have a whole clip of it on YouTube about that. Exactly. <laughs> I have never tasted the cocktail. Would you like to? I'm not certain. I am not sure. It doesn't necessarily sound like something I'm into. But you're looking at me very disappointed right now, and I don't like that. Well, I, mean, I mean, I make peer pressure into drinking. I've urine. drank it before, and like I don't know, maybe like this is biased, but I think it's pretty good. Well, I'm glad you're happy with your own fluids. <laughs> I'm very happy for you. I'm Thanks. Just ecstatic that you're like my fluids are. You know, I actually feel like I'm about to need to go right now, so we can either do this or take like a piss break. You can I'll take a piss go. break. Piss, piss break and smokes are a okay. Wow. And I even like I'm happy to do it in a glass with. I still have a bit of scotch, but I don't think I'm okay right now. I'll drink it. I'm. Uh, you will allegedly drink it because I'm sure YouTube will demonetize the fuck out of me if we actually admit that that's happening. Yeah, I understand. It might be a little. But if I do it off camera. I mean, it's for a bit. It's for a bit. Oh, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to edit this so it can actually still stay on YouTube. Okay, <laughs> that's, I'm trying. You're like, I'm trying to pee in this cup. I'm trying, no, I'm trying to be like more conservative in my language that I'm saying right now. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm working Why? on it. This is me being conservative. So, <laughs> <laughs> so conservative. So conservative. I apologize. Has no one drank Not your, really, actually. Has no one drank your piss in a while? Actually, no. Aw. The last time was in Prague, like, before I left. That's not that long ago. Been in the states for like two no, weeks. No, no, I left and like I remember it was um, December twentieth last year, <laughs> and so then I stop like my work. I always do like my last scene on the fifteenth, and I think I actually no, I did it on the fifteenth and sixteenth, and so then before that, it would have been like around like the second week of like December last year that someone drank my piss. And who is that person? Alexander. Okay. Uh, the great. Alexander, he works for Giorgio, <laughs> and I actually love him as a male talent. He is one of the only male talents that, like, will drink piss. And I love him for that because so many guys will not, and it's just like, okay, so you want me to drink your piss but not mine? And I've always said it's like you can, like, not do Unto someone that you won't do unto yourself. For the record, I have never asked her to drink my piss. For the record. Not once. Not once. I have never asked you to drink my piss. Well, I'm happy to exchange this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, okay. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't planning to exchange fluids with you this evening. So that was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was easy enough. Right? Like, mm. apparently, like, Anna doesn't need much convincing to not imbibe my fluids. I don't. <laughs> like, no. I'm super cool with never imbibing your fluids to Well, no, I just, fine. No, it's cool. I'm teasing you. I'm, I'm teasing you just a little bit. Just a little bit. And I'm not teasing you. No, I think you're dead serious about me drinking your piss. I am. Oh, she, she definitely <laughs> is. She yeah. definitely is. <laughs> she definitely 100% is. 
1,000%. It's not even like the fact of the whiskey. It's just that. No, no, no. This is who you are. I love you. And this is who you are. I know. That's so sweet. Like, none of this is, is, these are things you would say to me stone cold sober. I know. I know. I've known you for many years. I've known you since you lived here. I know. It's been a long time. I know. We're all. I've known you since you were in your last studio. Oh, doing the show too long. <laughs> Your last studio. I mean, we used no, to. No, it was before. It was in a different studio before you moved here. Really? Years and years ago, like under the. Original. I don't think it was with you. It was with another like female last... talents. Yeah, it's when me and Draven were doing the show when it originally launched. We used to record at their place up in the valley. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Like in 2016. Okay, not that long. <laughs> no. I mean, a long fucking time. Seven years? Almost eight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but right. I've known you a lot longer than that. Well, yes. For sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I, ha- I have memories of us at Andy Cindy Mrs. birthday party. Oh, yeah. Watching thirsty dudes watch people dance on a pole in the middle. That party was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally bitching about that party to my roommate who knows some of the other people who lived in that house. I'm like, that party was so late. Are you it was- talking about Soviet rule? No, no. So... This has to be like 2011, 2010? Easily, yeah. If not earlier. Well, I wasn't on the West Coast before 2010, so it oh, okay. had to be. Old school performer who I used to work for threw a birthday party in the Valley. And like me, Peter, Koga, <laughs> handful of like other people who have been in this industry way too long were there. And it was just a weird site. Like they had a pole set up in their living room. And this is a house party. There are literally dudes just snapping pictures of the host and other people dancing on the pole, like in a party situation. It's just really weird. And that's what I. That's why I don't go to expos or conventions. I'm just like I'm not into the parties or the clubs. I don't like people around me. But this was a house party, which makes I it know. even weirder. Yo, and I don't like that. <laughs> I didn't like it either. I was like, just. You can see me right now. I'm like, even the thought. I'm like, I don't like. I, I, I didn't care for it at all either. It was literally, I believe I tweeted the night of like the thirst is alive in the Valley. <laughs> like it was just bad. That sounds like the book I just read. It was the hunger. And I honestly probably shouldn't even like compare it to this, but you know, it's about the Donner party in the 1800s that like resorted to cannibalism when they're, that would have been preferable Oregon trail. That would have definitely been preferable to what was going on at this party. Awesome. So you prefer cannibalism over wow. sex. That's cool. But no, no. I respect you a lot for that. I respect, I prefer cannibalism to f- attention, like just gross attention seeking behavior. You can, like, you know, explain as much as you can, but like that. Like, no, no, no. I, I enjoy it. I have definitely had more sex than cannibalism in my life. <laughs> But it's how much you think about it and what you just I definitely, I definitely think about you, sex more than how much, how much you just compared it to that you said you would rather be a part of the Donner party than like a house like sex party. It, that says a it, lot about your character. It was not definitely not a sex I, party. And I compare like I respect you a lot for that. It was like, definitely not comparison. a sex party. It was literally just gross attention seeking behavior and a bunch of dudes that like apparently have never seen a girl on a pole before. It was yeah. really lame. Yeah. So no, if there's actual sex happening, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Right. But it was just literally like people spinning on the pole and dudes pulling out their phones like, look at look at it was lame. It was fucking lame. <laughs> it was fucking lame. <laughs> and I just kinda look at Peter like <laughs> <laughs> And you guys ditched together. No. No. No, uh, we both hung out for a while. <laughs> A while. I mean, I barely have any recollection of this party, but I sort of remember it. <laughs> that would have been when I, like, first started working in, like, retail. <laughs> mm. Well, we're old. Yeah. Hmm? We're old. That wasn't, like, that long ago, actually, since <clears throat> I started working and then I started in porn. That was just, like, a few years before I started porn. Are you 27 or 28 now? I turned 27 this year. Right. So this was, um, you were 17. When? When this party happened. If it was 2011. Oh, no, no, sorry. Sorry. 2010. 
Oh, God. No, it's 2024. We're not, we're not talking about numbers right now. This was said off air, but apparently Anna pregame to before the show. Well, yeah. Yes, I had three beers. Jesus Christ, I didn't realize you had that many. It's three. I love that Anna had to pregame for and now we drink. I love that. I love that for you. Jesus, it's not. I don't know you had that many. It's three beers. I, I what's mean, I, your problem? I saw you drink one. I didn't see you drink. Well, before you got home, it was two. But what's the problem with like three beers? It's pretty much sober. I mean, I agree. I agree. <laughs> three beers is pretty much sober. I really don't understand. No, no. I was being sincere there. I know it sounded sarcastic, but I was being sincere. Three is pretty much sober. It's just beer. Right? And she was drinking with Jamie. She wasn't drinking alone. Right. Why is all this judgment, Peter? I'm not judging. I feel a lot of judgment. See, he judges my makeup. He judges, like, judges the beer. Like. I always get accused of judging. I'm not judging anyone. And, and to be fair, he's only judging because he cares. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, you know, why the fuck would you judge about something you don't give a fuck about? That is very true. Right. Unless you're some weird internet troll. But Peter is not a weird internet troll. No, he's one of my best friends, and I love him. Honestly, on most days, all I'm trying to do is just get through the day. That's make it through. And I hope I'm probably not that much fun if I'm just reading, like, books on my phone. But at least I'm there with him. Yeah. And he can do his work. She's read a book every day that she's been here. Yes. I don't understand. Well, she turns pages no, and she uses her <laughs> eyes. No, no, no. She reads them on her phone. Okay. So well, that's just because they don't have the books that I want in the stores when I call them. So, Peter, let me break it down to you. She uses her eyes uh -huh. and she takes the written word and her brain translates it. <laughs> As I told her, I... I'm, Aren't you a writer? <laughs> I'm a writer, but I don't think I've ever re read a book in a day in my entire life. But do you understand how reading works, though? Right? I understand how reading it's funny. Works. I used to get excused. I don't understand like, how as a kid. Read like six books since she arrived here. I used to get like excused, <laughs> like when I was a kid, I could read like you know I would read like one Goosebumps, like within like an hour. This is like a hundred, hundred twenty pages. But then like you know once I did that, then I started going to like a lower class to like tutor math because I was good at math. Do you retain this stuff? Like when you read a whole book in a day, do you retain it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never read a book in a day either, so. Yeah, I don't think it's that much. I've read like, you know, question, 300, I, 400 pages. I mean, even, even if I was able to accomplish reading an entire book in a day, the chances that I would retain any of it are like zero. Okay, well, so this is why. <laughs> this is why. So, and if you see me on my phone, I'll read a page. And then sometimes I backtrack and like check it because normally I don't like reading on my phone. It's just the books that I want to read right now. I would find them at Powell's like in Oregon. And we don't have Powell's. It's bigger than Barnes and Nobles. And so I've been using my phone and normally I would like to underline, I use a pen and I write all over my books. I underline words that I either really like or that I don't know so that I can look them up or I'll underline like quotes or like, you know, references and double check them. And, uh, you it's know, impressive. my cliff notes, it's like I write all over my books normally. Like I always have a pen in my purse and I like to write on my books. Well, I'm glad you're not writing on your screen. <laughs> I... I actually mentioned this the other day to Peter. That I was like, I wish I could just take a pen and write on my phone because it's very frustrating that I can't underline the things that I want to. But you could screen cap and highlight them. Oh, I've screenshotted a lot. Just so you, know. Mm -hmm. you know, we do have bookstores in LA. We do. Yes, but you don't have the books that I want. And like Barnes and Noble's the biggest one. It's just very small. And if you are from the Northwest, you know about Powell's. I'm talking directly to the camera. You know about Powell's bookstore and that it's just like not even comparable. But how do you know there's not the books that you want? I bet there are. Because I've called them. But I, I'm, I'm not talking about Barnes and Noble. I'm talking about other. I've books. called them. Have you called the last bookstore downtown? Well, not downtown. I call the ones like around here, but well, not around here, but where we're staying. Like, well, yeah, the, the valley. valley's on the valley's uneducated. Oh, thanks. You don't live Peter. in the valley. He does, and I'm sure he says. And I, I, he nodded his head in approval when I said it. It's true. 
Okay, so I need to go all the way downtown to like purchase a book. Or book soup on yeah, fucking soup. Sunset. I was going to say book soup. Exactly. What the fuck is that? A bookstore? <laughs> book you, soup. How do you not know book soup? Hell, they've like, had signings of, from a it, bunch of people in the industry when they had their books one come of the most out. Famous bookstores in the world. No, it's not. Oh, it absolutely is. No, Powell's, <laughs> Powell's is the biggest independent bookstore in the entire world. Powell's is the biggest independent bookstore in the entire I, world. I guarantee you, book, book soup. soup. If I heard that, I would think that was for like fucking toddlers. No. 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 <laughs> well, then why do they pick a name like that? It stands out, it's memorable. As something I would flush like down Powell's, the toilet. I, I feel like it's an old timey drugstore. It's store. memorable as something I would flush down the toilets. Sure. I mean, <laughs> Powell's makes me feel like I'm going to get a fucking malt and sit at the counter. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're going there. We did. We did. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm not like Book Soup's fucking advocate book soup, here. I would, I would remember it as throwing up in a toilet if I thought of Book Soup. Yeah, we'll take you to Book Soup and then see what you think of it. Huh. Okay. Do you want to drive? Yeah. I'll, I'll okay, we got a deal. I don't think that was going to go down any other way. <laughs> <laughs> I might vomit in the restroom, but sure. I don't think it's happening tonight. No. Not tonight, but when he has a weekend. <laughs> She's just like, I'm waiting to hold my vomit in book soup's bath. I will. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> She'll pregame six beers for book soup. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's how much Guinness comes in, so... We'll do a six pack. <laughs> Knock back those kisses, puke and book soup. No, if I want to pregame for like that, then I'll also drink like half a liter of milk and we'll go from there. Straight off the bat. I would saran wrap your car. <laughs> Easier clean up that way. Because <laughs> it definitely sounds like some fluids are coming out of Anna. I don't know which end, but something's coming out of her. It's awesome when it comes out of both. Oh my God. Both holes or both ends or all three? Well, I think both holes and both ends means the same thing. Well, no. I mean, there's there's two holes down there and there's one hole up here. Okay, I mean, there's but. There's three holes up here. Both holes and both ends. It just means, you know, that's ambiguous because you could be choosing one or the other. It's not specific what you just said. I know. Specifically. What specifically, I was thinking number two and. <laughs> Number two, and vomit, or? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because we know the, the urine is actually reserved for special customers. We can't just let that, like. The urine is reserved for you. Oh, Drinking. Just, just for me? Aw. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I finish this bottle, I will refill it for you. Aww. Especially for you. Oh, my God. It, it's such I a promise. shame that Anna lives in Europe. I, I love promise. her so much. Oh. No one else is trying to like give me a bottle of their fluids. Oh. No one. Oh. You'd definitely be able to sell that. Yeah, but that seems kind of tacky. Well, I'm <gasps> to sell your fluids when they're gifted to me. Okay, that was your point. I thought. Okay. Yes. No. I would hope you wouldn't. Right. Like. No. 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 You selling your fluids in general, not tacky. When you're like. Matt, these fluids are for you. I don't sell it all, so that would be especially for you. Well, yeah, but like the intent was to yeah. give them to me, mm -hmm. so it'd be kind of tacky to be like, thank you for this gift, Anna, to eBay. Okay, yes, that would or be wherever tacky. the Or wherever you sell bottles of Anna's fluids. I don't think that's oh, an yes. eBay Okay, bowl. we agree. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Oh, dude, I just imagine my seller rating go way the fuck down, just like... <laughs> The aroma wasn't quite like some bullshit. Ugh. Well, you have to reseal it with wax or something. Um, the official you know, seal of Matt Slayer, like I'm royalty, a wax you know, seal. I do it. have a wax seal. I have like this an surprises entire, me. Not I have a, a stationery <laughs> with like very like intricate like letters and like envelope, and I have like my quill tip with like I have black, white, gold, and yellow ink, and I have my wax and a little like. I don't, I'm blanking on the word for when I seal the wax with like an A. <laughs> Why do I never get sealed letters from you? I can send you one. Do you want one? Well, now that I have to ask, no. I'll send you one. I save those. I've had that like stationary since I was like 
years ago. <laughs> oh, and I've, I've never gotten one. Cool. Cool. Well, you've never said that you're interested in stationery or like a very like specific calligraphy letter. I didn't think I'd have to ask. I'm sorry. I, I, I see how much. I will send both of you one with a wax seal. The same one, dude. Peter and I. Oh well, no, a, not the same fucking the writing. Same time. The same, not the same fucking writing, but the same like stationery, like the envelope and the letter. And then of course I use my ink and everything, but that makes I can do it like different with my writing and the colors. What sort of letter are you going to send, Peter? I'd rather not say. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's that kind of personal. Mm. I won't say about you either. I'm okay if you do. No. We'll just leave my audience. As she reaches for the bottle, she's just like, I, I need a drink after this. Why not? Oh, I agree. Why not? <laughs> I agree. That's such a great sound, a cork opening. Wow, there's a lot more in that bottle than I actually thought there was. Eh, I think we're getting through it. I think we're at about like there. We've got to here. For the audience at home, this is last year's bottle. Yes, and it's been oxygenated. Is I think it, it's oxygenated. Is a it better? It's not. It's not as sweet as it normally is when you first open it because the more air that you have here, the more it oxygenates. I think that's the word. And doesn't even matter if like this is sealed. It's just like this much space is like air and it has oxygen. So if you like leave your bottle like up to here, then it will still taste the same. But the more that it goes down, the more air and oxygen is here. And so it starts to taste different. Like the more that you drink it down and you leave it like staying. I never knew that. I, ne I never knew. Like I'm being sincere. I never knew. Then again, most of my bottles don't last that long. That's fair. And, you know, I'm a bitch about this, but there's it nothing, still tastes good. <laughs> there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Be fucking passionate about the things you enjoy in life. I'm so passionate about that. Right? I have never gone to an actual fucking distillery. You have done it multiple times. Like, there's nothing wrong with being passionate about the things you enjoy in life. It's actually, Never apologize for that shit. I think I'll like say again, I think I've already talked about this, but the first time I went to Isla when I turned 21 and I was staying at like an Airbnb that was belonged to the tour guide for Ardbeg. And so he was a tour guide and I had messaged him and told him I was spending my 21st birthday there. And so during the tour, they're washing bags, like when they're fermenting like the barley he made a note of saying he was like, <clears throat> Ardbeg has always used like wood for their washing bags from like Oregon pine. Oh. And I was like, I just wanted to hug it because I'm so far away from home and I turned 21 and I was like, the, this wood is from Oregon. And that's what they've been using since like the 1800s. And that's wildly expensive in the 1800s. Yo, know, it was all, they've been using Oregon, uh, I think, pine since the right, 1800s. But, but getting, and it was shit, just, getting shit across the U.S., let alone across the Atlantic from the West Coast. Well, I that's mean, not even across the Atlantic because I'm on, like, the Pacific Coast. Right, right, right but I'm saying, Pacific, like, across the U.S. So, and then across yo, the Atlantic. Exactly. Is, I understand geography. I'm not your average American. Oh, of course. Or you can go over oh. the Arctic Circle, but no one at that time No one's doing, doing that, that. <laughs> Oh my God. That No, it just like when I was turning 21, when I was so far away from home, like I just wanted to hug like those bear, like those washing bags. I was like, this is from home and I'm not with my family. And I was like, I should be here. This is where I was meant to be. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So on a complete tangent. Yo, sorry. No, no, no. My, this is my complete tangent. <laughs> Speaking of Oregon. I remember a couple months back watching you snap on someone on Twitter when they referred to you as a Midwest girl. Oh, that was so funny. Just, no, it was someone else. They made a video, one of my fans, when they said they're like, oh, you're a hot Midwesterner. And one of my fans made like, I don't know, it was some TikTok video or something. And they're like, can you read a map? 
It's <laughs> well, I saw you respond like just kind of like, bro. I was like, dude, uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I I was I I saw that in real time and I was just dying. I'm like, I found it pretty funny, and that you know it goes to show a lot of people they can't even in the states they can't even pronounce Oregon. They think it's Oregon okay. or something. <laughs> That's how I hear it all the time. And it's Oregon, just so everyone is listening. With the rolled R. Yeah, yeah. With the okay, che- sorry. <laughs> with their Czech accent. <laughs> Oregon. Every year, the Czech accent gets a little thicker. Well, you know, if I, like, don't practice it, this, then I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to forget how to roll my tongue or how to do, like, or something. I'm going to forget how to do that. So I have to keep doing it. I'm not just trying to like fake it or something. No, I know you're not. I need to be able to still pronounce things in that way. And, you know, the more that you talk, it's like it comes easier to you. I mean, you're going on almost a third of your life in the Czech Republic. So, huh? About there. a fourth. Yeah. We're at right. that time. You're at a quarter Yo. already. It will not be far till you're at a third of your yeah, life. But, you all know, most of my adult life has been there. Right. So, like, you being inundated and picking up the accent is not unusual in any way, shape, or form. It is pretty funny, though. Like, every year when I post this, like, I definitely get a YouTube comment, like, where is she from? <laughs> every year. It's just like, watch the fucking episode, motherfucker. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Or I you swear. can do just, like, a simple search and. I prefer they watch the episode. I get views that way. Of course, that's better. Much, much. <laughs> Not that I'm saying that, like, we shouldn't Google you, but... Both. <laughs> Watch the episode first. Yep, I agree. So speaking of the Czech Republic, how's the love life these days in the real, real world? Well, I guess it's probably already shown on the video. I have this. It's just a promise ring. I'm not engaged, but I've been with my boyfriend for about three years now. Woohoo! And he's about, he wants to move away. He wants to move into my apartment and then spend some of his time back in Russia, where he's from. And I've, you know, told him that I have been in a long distance relationship and that was between uh, Portland and Los Angeles. And then after that, I moved to Europe. And, but, you know, I understand it's different between, you know, two people. It's not the same thing. And when he's living with me, it's just a promise ring to uh, work this out. And then he said he wants to uh, stay with me and follow me even if I go to Scotland. And he's used to a city. So I've, uh, we're talking about him like next year, if he can get a visa to go to like the UK and he can go and stay with me for like a week or two on like a desolate island, then, you know, I don't know. It's a promise ring that we'll see. Better than nothing. As long as you're happy, that's the important part, right? You are happy, right? Yes, he makes me happy. Perfect. That is the fucking important part. That's fucking awesome. Especially this. And then, you know, I've met his family. His grandma from Siberia loves me. Nice. So that makes me feel very happy. I like that I'm accepted in his family. You know, it's easy to be accepted in my family. I'm used to it. But I understand with other people, it's not so common. And so it's like especially being like so foreign it's you know that community and that family is really special when you live so far away no it's fucking that's awesome and it is important especially like not to there's nothing wrong with what you do for a living you know the industry we work in but we all have to acknowledge that like families are not necessarily accepting of it exactly so, so that's awesome. And I'm assuming they know what you do for a living. Yes, they do. It's absolutely fucking awesome. Yeah. Nah, we'll say good on him. Well, good on them. I mean, like, yeah. Good on us. Good, good on us family. Like, you know, dudes, you know, I mean, no, it's, no, I'm not discounting that. Like, no, it's good on dudes to like actually, you know, show up and um, actually be there. You know, I met him. I was obviously have already been doing this for almost nine years now, which is insane. 
but it's like you cannot expect me to stop like my career and the fact that he hasn't done that and that him and his family accepts that is like extremely important to me no that's awesome like believe me i i say this to people all the time like the minute the second that's just, I'm only going to do girl, girl. Right. Or <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But that is so like in like insulting that like guys think that it's like, oh, well, so then you don't care about like, you don't think that a girl can be like, it's not as serious with another girl. And actually like my boyfriend has said that when I've asked him about other girls, then he know he's like, no, I don't want you seeing other girls because I know it's just as important to you as another guy. It's still a relationship. And that to me says a lot. Yeah, that he understands what's up. Yeah. He understands it's still like an emotional relationship. And he doesn't say that about my work or in my personal life. It's just that we are together and that's what is important. But yeah, it is. Fuck yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It's fucking awesome. Like, yeah, I've said this a hundred fucking times on here. It's like, it is completely hypocritical of anyone to get involved with a performer and be like, you know, I probably was you know interested in you in the first place because you were a performer. And now that I'm here, you need to stop doing what you're doing that I was attracted to. It's just the worst thing. It is. And we've all seen it so many fucking times. Exactly. I've... Peter and has probably feel, seen it more than anyone. Of course. I've seen it through girls. They go off and on, off and on. Well, they'll hit me up. They're like, do you have work? And then they're like, no, I can't do this because of my boyfriend. And then they're like, oh, do you have work? And I'm just like, this is such bullshit. Like, why do you? <laughs> I don't understand. And honestly, at this point, like, I'm very, like, hesitant to, like, you know, re- like, I'm blanking on the word, not advertise, but you know, promote promote girls, exactly, for like companies that I'm like in touch with because they are not stable. And I don't mean that mentally. It's just like in there, like what they're doing. It's just like, I don't know how they're going to change within like the next like few months, year, whatever. Well, yeah. Why put your reputation at stake for someone you don't know is going to be solid? It looks bad on you. I totally get that. Like, It's not even that it looks bad on me. It's just that, you know, like, I don't want to be, like, part of that. I, I wholeheartedly agree. I am a very big proponent of, like, you and I can have conflict. Like, something can go wrong. We can make amends on that. If I vouch for you with someone else and you fuck me on that, you're probably dead to me. That's just how I roll. Like, at the point where, like, I extend myself to do you a favor with someone else and like, you fuck me on that. Nah, exactly. No, I don't coming back. I won't do that many favors for like either guys or girls. It's like, unless I know that you are stable and you're committed, then I don't want to have that responsibility on me. Right. And you don't want to have that reflected on you. Like even if it doesn't actually damage your relationships, But it's that responsibility. And also this comes to like, I feel this way a lot when I'm doing double anal and triple anal and I have like new girls that I'm working with. And if I can tell that a girl is not happy and, you know, it's just like grin and bear it, then I will tell the director that it's like, I am not comfortable working with this person because them working alongside me, they're trying to do the same thing that I do. And I have a lot of experience and I don't want any girl or guy to look back on a scene and be like, I was trying to reach her level and I couldn't like they were trying to like reach a level that was not like for them. And so I'm very clear about the fact that like, I don't want to work with anyone like that. Cause again, I don't want to be the person that like they're trying to copy and they're not aware of how to do it. Help well, yeah. like. Being healthy. Well, and on top of it, like, you don't want to deal with the drama of, like, them having some fucking weird resentment towards you after the That, fact. yo, resentment, saying that they were trying to do it on the same level, and they couldn't, so and I like, don't want to. Now I'm torn, it's Anna's fault. Exactly. <laughs> they were like, I was trying to do the same thing, and I didn't, 
like now it's like fucked up and I'm like it's not my fault just because you're trying to get to a level that you have not experienced that you haven't like prepared for and if I can tell that like any performer is struggling with that then I just don't want to be the one that they look back on and like that scene that like killed them I don't want to be a person in that scene I have a confession for you what I'm now shitting in a bag because of you <laughs> no you're not correct do you think I would actually buy that no no it was completely completely a nonsensical thing to say I'm gonna have more alcohol now <laughs> oh that's great super <laughs> She's like, that was dumb, Matt. That was yeah, it was. It's pretty fucking dumb. Peter laughed. That's the important <laughs> part. I <ain't> the Billa. <laughs> I don't even know what you just said to me. <laughs> you, I'm assuming it was an insult. It was. <laughs> See? I'm, I'm, I'm a little stuck on the, that you don't realize that you're nominated for like a number of regular awards. <laughs> Really? That was like an hour ago. That's like I know. a fucking hour ago. It just, it just like, you know, I'm kind of like dealing with award shit on the side here, but like. Oh, well, you guys should talk and I can read my book. No, you should not read your book. I should. Why no, not? You'll that have plenty was... of time to read your book later. I love that this podcast is two people looking at their phones and me talking about my, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to I get. I can like read it out loud if you want. Like, no, 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 no. Book. I'm, I'm trying to get Anna's. Um, nominations. Oh, for what? <laughs> um, okay, so you know, oh. for one thing, uh, you, you're definitely nominated for outrageous scene. Really, for what? For the scene from uh, Proxy's five, Proxy's uh, Gape Gang. <laughs> and it doesn't even remember the scene. Yes. Apparently. Well, no, oh, I don't remember. And actually, no, I did. No, 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 no. This, 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 this one, I'm, I'm proud of this one because, you know, we, one of my favorite things with the awards every year, even though like it's difficult to do, but I do it is, uh, we come, is I, I come up with alternate titles for the outrageous scenes. Okay. Nice. And I've kind of seen that. And I was, I was, pretty proud of this one which which one is it it's uh, so the scene is from prox uh proxy's gape gang the actual is that the five girls but i thought that was last year no the actual title is proxy's five girl lesbian gaping party. it's like me and britney and sasha and ivy or yes that's the one i thought that was like last year that seems like so long ago and, and the title that i gave it is intestinal fortitude <laughs> Okay, that's awesome, but you know the title? <laughs> okay, last year, the last year that I directed a scene, you remember the PT party? Yes, yes. I directed that. It was my clothes, and I directed it, and that was my title, and you didn't change it. No, no, no. I, I didn't change that, but I did give it my own unique title, okay. though. PT party. No, 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 no. What did I, you? No, I. What no, title did no. you give it? I remember, because we had a conversation about that. Uh... Uh, what was the name that I gave it? Hang on, I'm gonna look it up because I remember I gave it its own title. So oh, you I'll changed you right the now. title of oh, what I, didn't, I directed. I didn't, I didn't change the title. I gave it my own unique title That's as strange. well. Hang on, I'm gonna tell you. Hang on, wait, 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 wait. Uh, he localized it for America. It's a I localized mean, it's title. American PT party, but <laughs> we had we had a whole conversation about this. Hang on a second. Um, oh, but you're also nominated for uh, International Female Performer of the Year. You know that, right? She does it's now. <laughs> she does now. Are you talking about last year? Or no, I'm talking year? about this year. Okay. <laughs> well, we were talking about last year. No, we're no, talking about this, this year. Well, I brought up the PT party, and that was last year. That so was I last year. we're on the topic yes. yeah, of last year. We're on this year's award. Okay. Um, what outrageous scene? Are you? That is from this year, the five of us? Yes. I feel like that was a long time ago. Take the ago. goddamn okay. nomination. No, it was this year. Don't argue with the man and take the goddamn nomination. Well, um, I... 
But okay, so last year, the scene that you're talking about, the outrageous scene. Yeah. Anna, don't feel bad. I'm nominated for one thing that I'm not going to win. Okay, it was the. Um, oh, yeah, the PT party, right? PT party. That's what right. I said. And the title that I gave it was Afternoon with the Lewis Carroll Society of Degenerates. Fuck. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> Yes, you did, because we talked about it. Oh, my God. I don't remember. <laughs> there may have been alcohol involved. I'm just saying. Probably. I'm just saying. No, okay. I You're don't. also nominated for international all-girl scene with, okay, no, I with know Scarlett that. Alexis. I know that, but I think also my the movie, it doesn't say my direction on it, but for Sinful, but I, for Anna's Vintage Vixens. That is not nominated yet. Because it didn't come out in time. I thought it was. It did not come out in time. Always next year. Yeah, next year. I thought it was for this year, and it was like me and Brittany. Yeah, the, well, the scene, yeah, but but no, no, no. The scene or not the, like, DVD is out in time. The DVD is not out in time. But it was me and Brittany for best, like, lesbian no, international. you were nominated for, with, for the scene with, with Scarlett Alexis. Yes. Yes. But I know, was it last year's? I know Anna's year. Vintage Vixens were nominated for something. No, not, not this year. Was it last year then? No. <laughs> well, then, what am I looking 2025. at? 2025. I, I took screenshots of that because I was really happy for that movie. It's, I'm looking at it right now. Best birthday ever. That's the scene. International yes. all-girl sex scene with you and Scarlett Alexis. I totally got derailed on what I was bitching about about the awards earlier. Mm-hmm. I think for 2025 that instead of was- best adult podcast, we should have an actual individual episode. Oh yes. Yes. I saw, I saw your, <laughs> my rant I, about I that. Saw, you saw your tweet about this and I went, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he thinks that we're going to actually select, we're going to somehow f- figure out like the one episode. of. I mean, we pre-nom ourselves. <laughs> It's just like a goddamn scene. It's all pre-nommed. Yeah, but fans award fan awards are different. I mean, I, I like maybe, but I I don't know. That seems like that's a Beth. But I know, like some, from that scene, was not that movie. No, this scene is not in that movie. No, but I know that was nominated for something. I'm just saying, Peter. Like I understand what you're saying, but it's <laughs> you're like, somewhere. you're I don't like, know. this is too much work for this Highly. bullshit award. Highly unlikely. Last, I don't know if it was last year or this year. Up. No, it couldn't have been because the movie just came out. <laughs> oh no, I ha- I know it has no basis in reality. <laughs> I, I know it does. Like many things I tweet, it has no basis in reality. Okay. But I wishful fucking thing. Because January, it's fine. January 2023. What? January 2023. What was January? This movie, and I know that I remember seeing it on some. Oh, that is nomination. definitely within the. Uh, award I know I criteria. saw it on some nomination. Well, not ours. Ooh. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> because it's, because it was only on one platform. It's got to be on two platforms, and it just it came out on DVD after the fact. But I'm just saying, I know it'd be a lot of extra work for you guys. <laughs> Judging a podcast by everything they've put out versus, you know. An individual episode. I, I understand, but, you know, it's kind of like a series, you know, uh, like a porn series, you know, like you're not judging like the individual scenes. I mean, we have seen categories, obviously, but, uh, <laughs> but best adult podcast is not, doesn't yeah. rank high, nearly high enough. Uh, well, can we at least, you know, disqualify the things that are just set up for porn scenes? I would, I would love to do that. <laughs> like, I would really, uh, but that's as much as I can say on that topic right now. <laughs> that's more than enough. You said a fucking ton right there. We did do this after the awards last year, right? Did we? I think so. Because I definitely bitched about Blood Talk winning last year. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, you're yeah, like, I pushed that out of my mind. Okay, well, there's that one. That was and it's still for, going over her fucking scenes. Goddamn. Well, no, because like that movie, it was either last year or this year. Anna, I love you, but I hate to bring you. It's not nominated. Yeah, it's not. Nominated. It was for something. But, but it wasn't Avian either. I'm gonna start my own award show. 
Why not? There's, I mean, you know, there's, there can never be enough. Right. <laughs> I have a serious question though, Peter. Yes. Why are the GBNs a separate award show? <laughs> like, yeah, sorry for the real question all of a sudden. Um, well, um, way back in the day, the Gavian, the straight side didn't want anything to do with the gay side and vice versa. Well, I know. I, I haven't been around long enough to remember that shit, too. Um, and it just, you know, like, it, it, it works better as its own show. Okay. It's... You know, it's its own audience. It's not uh, like the 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 demographics don't really intersect that much, you know, uh, and and like and, and people love the Gavian show. Oh. They, they freaking love it, you know. So like, it's its own thing, and it should be its own thing, and it and it works as its own thing. Like, I I wouldn't, I just I I wouldn't mess with it. Like, I think it's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's awesome that, you know, it's spotlighted and it's like, oh, hey, this is its own thing. But it's like, on one hand, it feels like a weird kind of separate but equal type situation. I mean, I guess so. But it just like, it's just, it's a completely different audience. You know? Oh, no, for sure. And also it's like, <laughs> it's, it would make the Avian Award show like a 10 hour runtime if you would combine both. Yeah. <laughs> Showtime would be like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> I mean, and, and yeah, like Gavian is, is entertaining in its own right. I actually, the only Gavian awards that I've ever actually like been there and watched happen, um, was I think the second year during COVID when we did the, uh, like streaming version of the awards, um, and I was there at the studio, uh, for the Gavian awards. And I, I was like, wow, this, this is like the only time I've actually been here to watch the Gavian happen. And it was cool. Like, you know, it's, it's, its own, uh, like, it's just, it's a very different vibe from Avian. It's just a whole different thing. Like what's the vibe? I've never attended. So I, I it's just, I mean, it's very gay. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> oh my god, you don't say. <laughs> but, but in surprise to no one. <laughs> but it no, it's fi- it, it's like it just it has a different energy to it. I don't know. Like I I don't really know exactly how to put it into So who's the musical guest for the Gavians this year? I don't know. Question. You're not involved with like booking the Gavians? No, I'm not. I mean, I'm not really? involved. I'm not involved with booking the Avians. <laughs> I thought there's only like three people I'm who were definitely working. not involved with booking the Gavians. I thought there's only like three people in the office these days. Well, there are, but it, you know, I'm not one of the pe- one of those people who books the actual <laughs> musical talent for the show. Uh, I, I listen. I you know. I, I, I know there's been like some like blowback a little bit, whatever, but, um, about the musical guest for the avians. Or? Yeah. Like I'm excited as hell. Like I, <laughs> hey, hey, I tried to facilitate a DM slide between Griffmaster and fucking Iggy. And apparently that didn't work out. I, I'm I think- not being like vain, but I know that it was like, that was nominated. <laughs> I, I I'm trying to find you. it. I believe you. <laughs> I, I think Iggy Azalea is the shit. I've been a longtime fan, and I can't wait. I think it's going to be awesome. Can't be any worse than some of the other guests or musical guests over the years. I it's I like I I think she's a huge name. It's going to be great. No, she absolutely is a huge name, and like hopefully she shows up on time because there are definitely been other musical guests <laughs> that were very <laughs> fucking late. That's true. I'm not too worried about that, but yeah. <laughs> Wait, 2021? Wait, no, that was accepted. Was it that long <laughs> we're, ago? We're going to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, Anna is no, on a deep dive. No, I'm just saying, no, I know that it was nominated for things because okay. I took, like, the screenshots. Okay. Go to Wikipedia. They'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. Wikipedia is not like me because I do too much anal. Yeah, but they have the award nominees on Wikipedia every year. 
Do they? Oh, yeah. They do. It was definitely, I don't, I'm pretty sure it was Fravian because I don't keep track of anything else. You know what the saddest thing about the Iggy Azalea thing is? Is that, like, I've seen um, some headlines and stuff on, like, New York Post and places like that where they're like, uh, oh, Iggy's fans are are like saying she's desperate because she's doing our show. <laughs> I'm just like, fuck you guys. Like, what? Sorry, sorry, sorry. She is only doing the biggest award show of a multi billion dollar industry every year. Yeah, right. Oh, oh, oh my God. Her uh, her no. career is in such a decline. Right. Fuck you. Exactly. <laughs> There are so many people that are going to be in the front row that make so much more money a year than Iggy does. Oh, yeah. Like, there are probably some people in the front row who probably make more a month than Iggy does a year. Uh, exactly. It's such a weird dichotomy where it's just like, oh, this isn't legitimate entertainment. Like, then why does it make so much fucking money? That's right. Anna could crush us mm-hmm. with her wallet if she was paying attention. <laughs> oh, no, I could. I am paying attention. No, I'm, no, I'm just trying to find where I know that was. Like, I, I I really want to know the answer to the, to what. Okay, I'm I'll let it. I'll let it go. But I know that it was. That was <laughs> <laughs> okay, you think it's funny? Yeah, no, this is hilarious because <laughs> we have moved on quite a bit from. Well, I'm not because I really care about me and Brittany. I understand that. Well, I care about you too. Be passionate but, about it. And it know. was. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. I said all of my years are getting blurred, too. It'll only get worse. I it do. will only get worse. I promise right, you. You just want to credit it to that. but No, no, no. I'm just telling you as an old man. It will just get worse. Yeah. Like, I, I blinked. I, I, I swear I was 25, like, five minutes ago. Exactly. It only gets worse. Only gets worse. I promise you. Mm-hmm. So I, whenever anything goes wrong, I'm like, eh, it's okay. I'll be dead soon. <laughs> she wants to watch you be devoured uh, by insects right. while you're covered in honey in your that's own right. bile. That's right. that's right. No. Okay, I'll move on. I just remember calling Hel- Brittany and... You almost said her legal name. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for not giving me post work. Thank you. <laughs> Don't need you doxing people on here. I know. Maybe it was last year. I don't know. It won't last one to two years, but all right, I'll leave it be. I'll find it later. Anna, thank you. No, not for blaming people for giving us a very drunk show that we haven't. I haven't done a real like fucking barn burning drinking show in a while. Oh yeah, and we are doing it right now. Thank you. That is another death stare. Holy shit! I need a drink. Pour yourself one. International female performer of the year. I feel like it's especially like significant with Anna because she's the only one who's American and international female performer of the year. I mean, it's like being the world heavyweight champion. Yeah, exactly. Being performer of the year is just domestic. Right. That's like being the intercontinental <laughs> champion. You know, that's very nice of you to try to gloss over. <laughs> What I've been looking for, that's very flattering. And you're just like. I'm not glossing over anything. I'm sa- I'm saying that's a, a very impressive accolade. I would, I really appreciate <laughs> Anna, more Anna, how, that how many double anal scenes I've done. Anna, how many hot. Well, maybe that's why you're in the international anal, or, or I mean, just international performer of the year. I would Anna, like to know how, how many, many double uh, anal scenes I've done three different countries. That would be awesome. I, I almost exclusively like look at your own content. For you to be beating out a lot of those girls is fucking impressive. That is beating very, out who? I don't know who else is on the list. Of what? I mean, I could tell you. And you could, but <laughs> I'm just saying, a lot of the other European performers it, are very attractive people. Yes, yes. So to be... Well, yo, they're European, of course. Like, they're attractive. Uh, right. more than in America. Right. So I'm saying, for you to be among the nominated ones is a fucking feat. Exactly. Again. It, you're in good company. You're in right. rare fire. No, era. but I just want, I know that maybe it's X Biz or something, but I know that was nominated for several things. And it was, it's special to me because it's me and Brittany. 
Anna, Anna, why are you talking about the side chick in front of Peter? <laughs> He's wearing an AVN hat. <laughs> Talk about the side chick. I don't care. It's funny. Me and Brittany Bardot yeah. are lovers. No, that's that's not who. No, 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 Brittany. That's not what he's talking about. <laughs> like, Peter got it. Peter got it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You can go. S- well, I'm not. You met her last year, didn't you? When she came. Yes, yes, I did. Yes. Where was my introduction? What the hell? Were you in well, Vegas? I was in Vegas. I was in Vegas last year. Oh, you were. Oh, okay. For a oh day. All right. that was a surprise to me too. Last year, I wasn't going to go. And then I got FOMO because everyone was there. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I feel like this is coming on again? Oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing it this year. I'm not doing it this <laughs> I year. I feel like I li- <laughs> so literally my butt when- is so bony. <sighs> oh, my God. So when's... Wow, when's- she's got to double up on the... Well, it's right? just like... I should have put her in the leather chair. Uh, Wednesday night last year, I saw like everyone was there. That a bunch of people I haven't seen in a while. Like Just texted Gross like, so I'm going to be there tomorrow. Badge? Right. And then I showed up. I did a couple podcasts, one of which I just didn't air because it was fucking bullshit. At the expo? Uh-huh. Really? Oh, yeah. No, I showed up at ABN. I left here at 5 o'clock in the morning. Would you like to do, like, a podcast? Well, um, Spiegler gave me, like, my pass this year. And, like, last year I went with Cinematica. But I was only there for a couple hours. And I was going to ask Spiegler if he's cool with me, like signing a couple hours at his booth because I haven't done that in like six or seven years. I haven't been to any expo. I bet she'll have a bigger line than like. I really fucking doubt it. Fucking. Oh, no, I, I, I really, bet you will. I really fucking doubt that. <laughs> and I hate to break <laughs> you. You have so. a very devoted fan base. I really don't fucking think so. But. No, no. Believe me. I have your fans commenting on other people's well, videos on YouTube. That's, being like, when is Anna going to be on again? Well, that's so nice, but it doesn't correlate <laughs> to like the people that show up. So I really doubt that. Oh, we'll see. we'll see. We'll see. We'll <laughs> see. But I, I don't think I'm going to have FOMO this year to like show up. Like right. last, last year was a, I was a crazy person. I left here at 5 a.m., got to Vegas at about 10, fucking started drinking immediately to get in there. Well, yeah. Last year was kind of special because it was back know, to real life. First, first back to Vegas. The year before that, years. the year oh. before that was special because I picked you up. You picked me up. Yo. Oh, did you body slam Peter? No. Are you talking about when Yo. I went to the hospital? No, but then, no, but that, that was, that was. Three years ago. Okay, this is why my memory is fucked up. That was three I'm, years I'm, ago. I'm, I'm saying like this last year was the first post COVID like back to Vegas year. Yeah, no, I definitely, <laughs> I, I definitely got some fumble, but I, I only showed up for the day. Like I rolled in on Thursday. This like it just goes to explain. I have no idea when these things. I only showed up Thursday. I knocked out three podcasts. I hung in the media room. I saw some people. I turned around and drove back to LA that night. Wow. No sleep. The only time I've done that, I I did that once, which was for Joanna's wedding. Oh. Which I wasn't invited to. Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn. That's harsh. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) It is. It is. Like, I don't don't fault Joanna and Aaron. It's like their fucking day. Like, you have the guest list. (laughs) My beef at, like, it, this is what fucking seven years after the fact. My beef, honestly, is with my co-host at the time because Draven and Charlotte went, uh, and like uh, they lied to me while they were going to Vegas. Oh damn! Like they're like, oh, we're Wait, just going they to Vegas. Lied about that they were going for Joanna's wedding, and like I am always at the person like it's your fucking day. Like if you don't invite me, I'm not offended by that. Right. It's your fucking day. Like well, I like I I'll never forget. She invited me like, like a week beforehand or something. I know? remember that because and it was a week, but I wasn't living there. It was, it was on Halloween. It was right smack <laughs> dab in the middle. Like while I was like ass deep in nominations. Hell, I remember that. Right. And I was like, Joanna, how the hell am I going to like, I'm in the middle of nominations. How am I going to go to Vegas for a day for so- she was like, oh, I don't know if you don't want to come. I was like, I- I'll figure it out. And I ended up driving there with Asa, Kira. And we went, Aww. we went, did the wedding. 
did like five minutes of the reception, turned around and drove back. <laughs> As you got to do yeah. sometimes. <laughs> As you got to do. Yeah. I, that, that's the only time I've gone the you know Vegas and back in one. Day. Really? Yeah. I was very I thankful last that. year, Damien, that I drive a Tesla and I had an autopilot because the car basically did most of the driving back. Nice. It was a whoo. no. I like to drive a car. Fuck you. You think I can't drive a manual? I like to drive a car. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. All back from an hour I and a half ago. I, I didn't realize that you knew how to drive a manual. I learned how to I drive respect. it when I was like drunk. I respect. So. I, I respect that. And, and about to throw up. I retract my statement window. and I apologize for. If you're about to drive a shift and you're throwing up, like want to throw up out the window, then I, I, I wholeheartedly <laughs> apologize for accusing you of not being able. And how to many drive times that. have you even used chains going through mountains? Never. There you fucking go. Exactly. <laughs> Anna's more of a man than you. That's correct. Get down in the fucking mud in the snow. <laughs> God, you have to put the chains on your fucking tires. That's not fun. I'm sure it's not, and I don't want to experience it. Right. We live in LA for a reason. <laughs> do not deal with that. And I used, when I lived here, I took every opportunity to drive back up to Oregon, and I had to go through all those mountains. I remember one year, my parents even told me, how do you, like, you're even going to do this? You're going to get snowed in. And, you know, you have to put cardboard under your tires so you can get the fuck out of the drift. Fuck that. There's planes for a reason. <laughs> And I plan to get fucking to my destination when I want to. Yeah, yeah. When you plan your flight, you get to your destination. No, so I plan my driving. <laughs> Fuck that. See, if you guys have never even had chains on your tires, I don't want to hear about nope. it. <laughs> unlike your idiot fan who accused you of being a good Midwestern girl, I am a good Midwestern boy. So, nope, no tires. It's flat. Your Midwestern is flat. Girl. Right. I don't need chains. I just drift and you know, slide and kitty litter. There you go. <laughs> Just a little kitty litter under the tires sometimes. <laughs> yep. And you've never used like cardboard under your tires I mean, that's, to get out of a drift. No, that, that has happened too. Yeah. Okay. That's easy. I no. may have done that once or twice. Yeah. It's one of those things like huh. back in Chicago, it was like you just kept a I bag remember, of fucking kitty litter in your trunk. I was with a photographer and like, like the going up into, you know, the Cascader region. And he did not have, like, snow tires or even chains. And, like, we're going through the mountains. And there's no service, by the way, here. Of course not. And he started, he went into a drift, and there's the fucking river here. And the more he tried to drive his car, the more he went into a dr the drift towards the river. And was the photographer I was with. And we had to wait and flag someone down who thankfully had some cardboard in his truck. But oh that was, I was like, oh my God, this dude would have been fucked. <laughs> and Anna was never seen again. <laughs> Except here she is. But here she is. But oh, I'm talking about alternate timeline. I would have made Anna. it out. Yeah. <laughs> alternate timeline Anna is just discovered on the side of a river and frozen over Oregon. Thankfully, we don't live in that timeline. Exactly. She couldn't we threaten me with her urine if we lived in that timeline. <laughs> It's not a threat at that point. It's, it's a promise. A, it's a blessing. It's a promise. <laughs> no, it's a blessing at that point. If you're stuck in the snow, that's a fucking blessing, and, and you should appreciate it. That's right. Everyone should appreciate Anna's urine. At any time, yes. But that is a specific point. You should. Except when she eats asparagus. She shouldn't appreciate that. Hey, yeah. <laughs> she has nothing for that. She's just like, yeah, that, that's accurate. Whatever. You'll get me on my pineapple days if you can't appreciate me on my asparagus days. That never happens. <laughs> I don't know. I, I am not your dietitian. I have no idea what okay, goes well in. Okay, well, then we can go through day by day if you're interested in that. Please, Anna, for the audience, break down your weekly meal plan for us. Well, you know, I eat a lot of, like, dairy and carbs. And then I also, when I go out, I drink a lot of smoothies or like, I don't know, you know, smoothies. Like I, that's where I get very annoyed with salads because I hate the sound of like a plate with a fork. Very strange for a vegetarian. It, no, it's well, like, and I would rather. Well, she hates the lettuce screaming. 
It really, it really is fucking annoying, and I hate iceberg. I hate iceberg lettuce, which is what like most places have. If you give me like an arugula salad with goat cheese and like I don't know vinaigrette or something, I love that. But like I hate going to a restaurant and there's iceberg lettuce and you're supposed to stab it and you hear the fork scrape across the plate. I fucking hate that. So I would rather get a smoothie with like green juices and everything or get tofu. And actually my nutritionist in Prague has told me that my levels take supplements for iron and they have told me that my levels are fine that I'm actually low on carbs and so that I should focus on carbs. Wow. The yeah, anti-American that, diet. That's the exact no, that's opposite my che- of what no, I'm that's, that's my do. Czech diet. That's my European diet. Right, right. right. But the rest of us are like, uh, you should avoid carbs. I'm 100% and they, like, and I, I need to not eat carbs. I'm completely honest with them. If I tell them, it's like I drink a liter of milk per day and a lot of times I fast because like, you know, I don't want to eat like full things when I'm working. I don't want to get bloated. And so they've given me like nutrition drinks and like some like, you know, supplements. And they've said that this is like what to do. And they're like, honestly, you just need to focus on carbs because my supplements supplements and uh, how I wish my doctor would tell me you need to focus on carbs. That is what. Okay. So now Peter, 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 You, I can't. Have, <laughs> I have my medical records. That's honestly what they tell me because I have. Go ahead. That is exactly what they fucking tell me. I believe it. I believe I'm it saying too. I wish that's what my doctor told me. Peter, you bougie <laughs> motherfucker. You have a doctor in modern America? I do. You bougie motherfucker. Sorry. Dude, I'm still on. What is it? This fucking new thing. You grab the handles. And you stand on it, and it tells you, like, even, like, your water weight and fats and mineral I, I, I'm content. I'm not familiar and with that. It, it's, it's electrical I, resistance, so it measures, yeah. It's, okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Sadly, This yes. thing. Okay. It, it didn't give me good results, so. Yo, they, oh, they, all of my minerals and vitamins are fine. They told me that I'm lacking in, like, calories. And oh, look at you, Miss, I'm in my carbs. 20s, and I'm healthy. Look at you. And no, I'm not fucking hell. I'm actually lacking in like carbohydrates. Oh god. Okay, it's not that fucking easy though. <laughs> if I try, Peter knows if I try too hard, I'll get sick. Yeah. And I try hard to. You went to Taco Bell tonight. I don't trust your. <laughs> and I've had like a little bit, and I had a bit before. I'm just fucking with you. It's not actually, it's not that funny. People have, I have very bad scoliosis and it really affects here towards my stomach and I'll get very nauseous. It's actually not that funny because I'm not anorexic. I'm not bulimic, but I cannot eat that much that fast. And people always say like the slower you eat, you feel it, you know, you feel full. No, no, your body registers. Yeah. That's how I got fat. I eat really fast. I can't. No, I can't. Good on you. That's probably healthier that way. Sorry, that was kind of like a very like depressing turn to how I'm (laughs) trying to eat. (laughs) But I feel like Peter had seen that. And I'm just saying that my nutritionist says that I need to focus on carbs. All right. So we're going to take you to the old country buffet. It's exactly without meat. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, just right to the dessert table. No, I don't like sweet things. Weird. Well, I mean, if I'm like on my period, then yo, I like chocolate. Oh. But that's only when I'm on my period. I want to tell you my my other alternate outrageous scene title that I'm super proud of, other than uh, intestinal fortitude. <laughs> okay. yeah, come on with it. Which is a scene from Kink with London River Ooh. called oh. the, the Interrogation. I love her. She used to live in Portland. And the title that I the gave The Interrogation. It, oh, I like the sound of that. The title that I gave it is Waterboard Me So I Know It's Real. <laughs> oh, my God. I want to do. I have done so much. Like, I read so much about, like, the 
like evolution of like interrogation and execution and torture. Oh my god, I would love to do a movie based on like that and with like different parts of the world. The evolution of torture and when we come into the 21st century. So like you guys know about mock e like executions. Mock, mock execution? Mock yo. Execution. Exactly. Yo. Is, is that like a, a mock debate? Mock No, trial? no. It's is that a, what happened on January 6th? No. Mocks, <laughs> like mock execution is like a psychological uh, interrogation technique that like, you know, first world countries use now for terrorists. And it's when they will put on like a mock trial and, you know, they all condemn them to like death row and they will go through like the complete like you know, system of it and give them their last meal and everything and they'll put them in front of, like, a firing row or whatever, the mask, and they basically shoot them with, like, a stun gun. And so they black out and then they wake up and it's, like, the interrogators are, like, do you have anything to fucking say to us before you go to hell or something, like, in those oh, man. words. And so it's, like, they think they go through an entire trial and then... and fake execution and they think they died and they're going into the afterlife and that is psychological interrogation that like the u.s is doing right now well, that would be really depressing to not have all those virgins <laughs> just from a fucking cia agent well no but can you imagine that <laughs> can you imagine no it's like a complete mock-up and That's fake horrible. execution right no, the U.S. has admitted to doing that for yeah. We do bad shit sometimes because you know it Often. doesn't it doesn't put any the thing about torture and like interrogation as long as it doesn't put any physical marks on your body then it is not humane. Well, yeah, I mean or that's how we got away with waterboarding humane. people for quite some time, and we are still using that. Oh yeah, it's in enhanced interrogation, not torture. It is torture, and it, interrogation and torture are basically the same Oh, thing. sorry. I forgot to air quotes that. It's enhanced interrogation. <laughs> yes. No, okay. you should really read about. There's a very good, like, Os like Oxford uh, publication about, like, the hand of the Inquisitioner and how they, like, feel like they redeem themselves and how they make terms, like, with what they're doing. And it's very interesting. And I have a pitch for you for a scene. What? Mock execution with the virgins. Oh, my God. With virgins. So, the, 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 okay. The, the, do you think anyone is going to fucking do that? Hopefully. I could probably do that in Prague. Right. Well, because, like, the joke is, like, you know, the martyrs get. It's not a fucking joke. But, okay, continue. I mean, it's definitely a joke that people think that there's an afterlife. But, yeah. Well, no, the fact, like, the whole point of this is that they think that they actually fucking died. You go through an entire trial, and you get a, like... Right, right, you know, well, trial, like, And so you, you get hit with, like, a tranquilizer dart, and then you wake up, and it's like, you have one last chance to tell us what you know. And it's like, you're in a life-death experience. You wake up, and you don't know what you're fucking doing. Right, and that's the setup for the sex. It's so psychological. <laughs> and so, sex... You want them to wake up and be like, I'm male, female, fuck me. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. It's a horrible idea. It's a, it's a horrible idea, but it's unique. It is. The things that, and this is also, there is like a poem that I've read, and it's just like the amount of torment that humans inflict on other, like, humans. It's just like no other animal on the planet tries to, like, devise ways how we can make someone else feel the most pain, either physically or emotionally. And that's like the fucking people. Well, the, the, no other animal has blind tribalism like we do too. I don't agree with that. Really? No. Why not? Well, what like species or what like part of like animalia are you talking about? I don't think anyone else in like the animal kingdom is just like, no, other people a part of or other species a part of Animalia families are completely aware and what? they can talk to each other and they can feel things even if we don't understand how their nervous system works. Well, yeah, that, that, that was my point. Like we as humans are consciously aware of stuff, but we are still like fighting amongst ourselves for stupid superficial fucking reasons and blind tribalism with like, oh, hey. You're another, so I'm going to fight you because you're another. 
The only reason that humans are at the top of the food chain is because they use the materials. And I do admit that they have opposable thumbs. They've stood upright as homo sapiens. That's why. But they only use tools. They only use tools that have made them the top of the food chain. If they did not have that, then they would be at the very fucking bottom. And still, like, yeah, I think we're I think we're solid mid tier. <laughs> I don't think we're I don't think we're F tier. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there are definitely things that are lower tier than us. Look at your we've... fucking fingers and look at your jaws. You're a scavenger. Duh. <laughs> Hunter gatherer. Duh. Duh. Oh. You admit it. Hunter gatherer is like how I want. Oh, that's Whoa. the thing. Oh, Got careful, it. careful. You can't even reach me though. Cause you're pulling away. I'm not, I'm right here. Ah, there we go. Hunter gatherer is like how I like to say it, not scavenger. This is gonna be a no, you're a scavenger. Edit. You're worse than a fucking like. <laughs> wow, Anna's now back to insulting me because I haven't drank her urine. Jesus Christ. No, it has nothing to do with that. I'm just being honest. She's obsessed with the urine. I know. Am I? Yes. Uh, in multiple years of doing this, I concur. <laughs> multiple years of doing this. Look at this look that she's giving me. What? I don't know. But I hate to do it, guys. You know, we've been doing this for like over two hours. A long time. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a good show, though. Hi, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Just put your face hole near the mic. No, that is not near the mic. Yeah, no, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to look at you right here. Well, I'm trying to wrap the show. Okay, cool. All right. I, I hate to do it. You know, this wraps up the 2024 edition. We're going to call last call on this motherfucker. Been a pleasure. It has it? Absolutely. So with the straight face even. I, I, I He says it with a straight face. 100%. <laughs> He's like, I've only been answering business calls for half of this, so. <laughs> I, you know, I'm dealing with business while we're doing this, but, you know, it's been a pleasure. Well, it's been a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. But before we get you two out of here, remind the people where they can find y'all. Go first. Uh, at Peter Warren on, on X. And you have an Instagram. Wet Scrog Rex. <laughs> <laughs> and you can go to avn.com and hopefully vote for us for uh, Best Adult Podcast. By the time this airs. Yes, but absolutely by the time this airs, you'll be able well, to. By the time this airs, actually, AVN will be over, but. Right, right, right. So hopefully I'll have lost by then. <sighs> Whatever. We'll see. I'm not winning. <laughs> There's no chance I'm winning. We know. We know. <laughs> wow, you didn't have to confirm my bias. Damn. Damn. Fuck, sorry. Anna is apparently not going to well, be going on the campaign I'm losing two. I'm losing two, so. I doubt that. I mean, No. I mean, your boat, so don't worry. We're sinking together. <laughs> Aw, Anna and I are sinking together. But can you tell them where to find you, Anna, while we sink? Um, Anna DeVille XXX on Twitter. And then Anna is a succubus uh, Instagram. Till 2025, everyone. Drink up, motherfuckers. Great. Woo! Nasravi. <laughs> <laughs>